Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to turn any kind of mesh into a coral. You can see it's first growing upwards and then sideways. It's avoiding intersections, so we get these layered surfaces and it's also not growing in the shadow. So these are the three motivations for growth and we can have a quick look at the setup. So we have an input mesh a solver which is doing the growth based on a couple of masks like so for driving it upwards and after blurring the normal directions we can also um, define the growth over time so this would first grow upwards and then later on sideways. We peek it out and remesh it constantly and this is how we get this kind of plant. Of course we're going to start from scratch but you can also just download the files from my Procygen website. There's also a link to Patreon if you want to support me and here are all the files for downloading. I will add one that is called something with toot for tutorial. So let's create a new file and start off with a test geometry. I will choose the rubber toy. Let's rename this to, let's say, plant or a coral rather. And inside we can disable the shader and make sure the mesh has unit size. So you would scale it to fit Z. So this would be one. And we also justify Y to make it sit right on the floor. Now in order to get rid of these intersections, we will use the remesh to a voxel grid with a division size of 0.01 and we can reproject it to the original so it should be a bit more or a bit more true to the input. Let's do the most complex mask first. So we will mask along the direction over time. And first of all, we want to get the angle of the normals using a dot product of the V at N normals against the up vector 0, 1, 0. Let's export the angle as color so we can see it's currently ranging from positive 1 to negative 1. And we would like to fit this to range from 0 to 1 using the fit11 one one function so we can e more easily address the points that are pointing downwards up to the ones that point upwards. The ramp should be called um, maybe direction and it would run over time divided by duration. The duration is a float slider by the same name, which can stretch or shorten the time. So now we have a slider for the duration. I can say 1.5 seconds should be the entire growth phase and we can flip it. So the first point on the ramp would say we want this to grow upwards and then it should grow sideways. This would be 0.5 would be perfectly to the right hand or left hand side or we could even lower it a bit so it would grow downwards. And in order to get a smooth transition we are going to use B-spline as the interpolation method and I want to, this to grow upwards for quite a bit and then only in the last frames it would grow sideways more and more. Now, how can we create a mask of this? We do this by subtracting mm, the ramp or the angle with the ramp. So, for example, when the time is one second, it would be here and it would basically subtract this 
from the angle. So we would be ending up somewhere here maybe. And this would be zero. And the more we deviate from this angle wise, this number would grow. So let's uh, put this in a, into an inverted smooth function where we would say between zero and 0 0.25 the mask should return either zero or up to one. So let's just use a mask and hit play. So this is a bit fast because we didn't activate the watch icon and now you see it gradually just slows down. Let's set the duration to three seconds so we can see this a little bit better and it goes down here. By the way, without the absolute function, it would just go one direction so it would be all white and then slowly fading to dark. This is why we need the absolute. Great. So how does this displace the surface? Let's set up a parameter called f at mask and use that on a soft peak which is set to attribute mask and displace the surface by 0.05 centimeters. So again, the same effect as before. If we hit play, you should see this is being displaced downwards. Let's repeat this one second like this. All right, now let's copy these nodes inside a solver and squeeze it in between the input and output like so and now you will see that this is growing uh, upwards and at some point it will be displaced sideways but we also get really stretched edges so let's first of all reduce the distance and then make sure that in each frame we are going to remesh the entire surface so the remesher will be set to a target or edge length of 0.01 with four iterations for a bit better quality. You can also play with the smoothing. Uh, just for learning, we will do that. So this would be um, better leave the solver, maybe reset the simulation in case you have problems and now you will see that it's growing upwards. These little um, elements are growing because there are some irregularities on the remesh node which are quite useful in our case and then after three seconds it should more and more start to grow sideways so you can see this kind of mushroom like shape already all right let's jump back to frame zero and dive inside the solver to change the duration to 1.5 because we don't want to end up with too much geometry and now, just for learning, we can set the smoothing to one and you will see that our mesh is uh, being smoothed out very drastically. It's even fading away, especially on the bottom. So if that's interesting for you, you could also consider this kind of effect. But of course, uh, we want our mesh to, well, stay existing. So either zero or 0 0.1 for smoothing. And in order to avoid intersections, we should also add a few more masks. Let's disable the direction mask for the time being so we can focus more on the new ones. There's a mask by feature node. We can press enter to see what it's currently doing. It's uh, drawing a shadow there, so only the exposed or the ones that are being lit only those points will grow. We can uh, see this effect if we just activate the last node and hit play. You can still see the shadow here nicely. And this would be, I think, quite realistic for a plant. It wants to grow upwards and at the same time it needs light. So this is quite useful. At the same time, this is not really avoiding intersections. So we could add a ambient occlusion, so let's calculate that. We don't need as many samples, let's just use 10. 
in case you uh, have a hard time imagining what it's doing, you can um, just press enter again and escape to disable and you will see what it's doing. So we don't need as much blur, maybe just two. And you can also see it here. And this would be blur. I don't want blur because um, it creates some artifacts that might be interesting. And we want the rays to avoid intersections to just go 10 centimeters using a cone angle of maybe 30. And there's also the remap occlusion function. So we can say if you are below 30% of this ray distance, then there shouldn't be any growth at all because then we're really close to intersecting with another surface. So let's see this in action. So I click on the last node, go outside and hit play. And now if we're lucky, you see that it's kind of splitting up so this is exactly what we want. These kind of uh, distances here would then lead to a more interesting result. So they never intersect. Let's now enable our mask as well and make sure it's multiplied with the existing mask. So now all three masks are combined. This is direction. We don't need that. We just want the shadows, the occlusion and our direction, which we did as a custom wrangle. And then when we jump back, we should get a combination of all three effects. We're going upwards only where the sun is shining and as long as we do not intersect. And then after 1.5 seconds, this should grow only sideways. You can stop the simulation whenever you like but I already yeah, like the, the layering on top. Again, everything counts in there. So whatever you set up in the solver, like the mask, the amount of blurring, the bias of the ambient occlusion could be stricter, um, how much you peak the surface. Uh, of course, the growth direction we define here and also what you set in the remesher in terms of smoothing and target size will have a really strong effect on the end result. However, you decide we can uh, bring in a bit more of um, detail after the simulation using a subdivision node. Make sure to set it to open subdiv to uh, loop so that way it remains triangulated. And if you like, you can use a color node, attribute adjust color can give you, just to get started, some bounding box along Y. If the solver is playing nicely. So let's just Simulate it one more time or use a new scene view in case you have issues there. Then just hit play. And one more thing I did to get uh, a nicer um, result is also blurring the normals. So especially before mass direction and peak what I have been doing is create normals, like so, on points. And you could blur these by setting the attribute blur to capital N. Maybe give it five blurring iterations. And this will also change the effect. So let's just uh, jump back, hit play. And you see that the entire result is a bit smoother. It doesn't give you the very intricate details and then grows sideways. So it's a matter of uh, your personal taste. And it's also about where you want the, the details uh, to, to occur. Maybe this is a bit too smooth. So uh, let's try to set the remesher to zero. So I get some artifacts and at the same time a bit of blur.
and now it goes to the outside like this. Again, if you want uh, more detail, experiment with uh, reducing the blurring iterations to maybe something like one or two, but this would be the result for now. Let's bring in the subdivision like this. And if you want to, you can also um, bring in a quick um, color scheme for this result. All right, thank you for watching.